Well, this year's violence between drug cartels in Mexico has caused thousands of deaths, approximately 6,000 over the course of time. Congressman Brian Bilbray has written a letter to President Obama with a big request. He joins us now to tell us all about it. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Thanks for coming in. What a gorgeous morning. Yes, Absolutely great morning. to be back in San Diego. <laughs> this is why I come home. No <laughs> doubt. This is why we live here. Absolutely. So Absolutely. what are you asking the president to do here? I'm asking the president not to forget that while he's talking about moving out of Iraq, which is a fait accompli, I think everything, great success there, that struggles in Afghanistan. Don't forget about our own backyard, that there was a war going on right on San Diego's frontier. It's actually crossed over. We've actually confronted a situation where last year 6,000, but this year there's already 2,000 have been killed in the last two months. So we're, it's a major war going on down there. And that the you know we we need to recognize that we need to defend our own um, neighborhoods um, in our own backyard and not ignore Mexico because it can affect our our families here. What needs to be done? Are we talking money needs to be funneled there? Just more cooperation that we haven't seen? What, what, what's the you answer? know my surprise a lot of people that the chairman of the Immigration Reform Caucus is a big supporter of what's called the Merida Initiative, and it's to do in Mexico what we were, what we did in Colombia. That is use our military, our training, help their military train, give them the equipment so they can go down and get the bad guys. And I'll tell you something: it, it was successful in Colombia, and if we're willing to put the resources overseas in Afghanistan and Iraq, if we're willing to fight the battle in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Doggone it, San Diegans, we need to wake up the president and the administration. Don't forget about our own backyard, northern Mexico. Mm -hmm. And sadly, Mexico is so far out of control that somebody like myself that practically grew up in Baja, the last, you know, last Christmas, I took my family to El Salvador rather than right. Baja because it's safer than in our own backyard. I was going to say, I mean, obviously they're, they're complaining about the lack of tourists and they're trying to get more people down there, but it's dangerous and they keep talking about that. Um, what, I mean, you said it's kind of coming up even into Chula Vista. Tell, talk to us about We've that already seen incidents of, of kidnappings and activity of the drug cartel in the south, south part of our county. And so, you know, like I told President Bush and now I'm telling um, President Obama, Look, if we've got to fight this war, let's do it on Mexican soil in Tijuana, not in San Diego. Because those of us in San Diego, you know, we're so much more aware of what's going on in Mexico than Washington. So I felt a real responsibility to sort of say, why are you doing all this other? Don't, you know, forget about our own backyard because it can affect us in San Diego. And you say, wake up the administration. Are there indications that they're asleep at the wheel at this? Or no, it's just thought? that they've got all other things to do in it. They're talking about all kinds of other big agendas. Mm -hmm. They've been waiting for years to be able to get into... Uh, uh, the seat of power and be able to do all kinds of things and I know there's things they want to do and they've been looking forward to do but this is something they have to do they have to defend our neighborhoods um, the border is still out of control mm -hmm. there's still guns and, and money going south there's still drugs and and uh, compromise ban um, you know uh, illegals coming north yeah. And they've got to concentrate on that, even though it may not be something they've been looking forward to. This is the responsibility of being in the White House. What about our responsibility here as far as, you know, the leaders of San Diego to go down there? I was going to say meet with the new police chiefs and such, but every time we turn around, one of the police chiefs is murdered. Oh, not just police chiefs. You know, chief, I mean, FBI it's everybody. Agents. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. all. They are, look, I'll tell you something. It frustrates me that Washington doesn't understand how bad it's gone. In fact, I made the comment that in Mexico, everyone knows what the term um, silver or lead means, which means you either take my bribe or I'll kill you or kill your children and family. I, when I gave that speech, I said that I bet you um, how, um, the majority of people in Congress in the U.S. don't even know what the term is. Yeah, sure. The senator from Tennessee leans over to me and says, what does it mean, Congressman? <laughs> And it really yeah. just shows there's a sure. real lack of understanding of what's happening on the other side of this frontier, and it's crossing over. So much has happened in the past week with the Obama administration. A couple things. One of them you alluded to, pulling the troops out of Iraq. Your thoughts just on, on what he has promised this Well, look, I was there last year in July. The war was that basically shut down. And the Marines, instead of fighting wars, were teaching city council meetings. Anybody who was there last summer understood that the surge worked, the issue had been settled, and it's all but how do you now pull them out without exposing. And, and I think that's a reasonable thing. The president's going to catch a lot of cane because he promised things, and now that he sees the reality, he realized that he can't keep to an arbitrary timeline, and so he's going to be attacked by the left on that. But that's what leadership's about, doing the right thing, even though your friends may get upset. Afghanistan is going to be a real concern. The new Congressman Hunter, who fought in Afghanistan, now is concerned that we don't just move troops in without the infrastructure. But 
that's a real challenge too, and we're we're really looking at addressing that. So I think Iraq is 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 um, you're going to see that phase out, not as fast as some, but as fat, much faster than a lot of people, and that's a success. I got you got to give, you know, I. I gave Bush a lot of hell when he was in. Mm -hmm. He was successful in Iraq and closing. The surge worked. Anybody that, you know, it's a wise man that is willing to admit they made a mistake. And I think the president knows the surge did work. And now he can, he can actually capitalize off that success of a previous administration. There's not many things he can, he can say <laughs> that. Uh, but that's one. All right. Well, let's talk budget. Absolutely. Go ahead. Let's hear. We're talking about a proposal that's twice as big as any budget we've ever seen in this republic. And, you know, I just hope that we understand how big a trillion dollars is. Think about this. If you spend a million dollars every day since Jesus Christ was born, a million dollars every day since Christ was born, you still wouldn't spend a trillion dollars as of today. This is a huge issue. And um, frankly, what I'm concerned about is I see a whole lot of things added into this budget. There were things that people have been planning, wanting to do, but it's not part of a crisis, not part of a whole package. And um, I think it's just sort of piling on, and this budget is absolutely huge. And the concept of, um, you know, uh, the new taxes, the new proposals, this thing of the carbon um, uh, tax, that means everybody that, that buys gasoline, anybody who buys electricity, there's a huge hit. I'd rather see us, rather than talking about taxes, we ought to be talking about shutting down coal plants and building clean, next generation nuclear, building new um, um, hydroelectric, building especially new wind generation. I'd rather see us talking about being proactive and getting things built that will clean up the environment and make us energy independent, rather than the old Washington tactic of saying, how can we tax money and take right. money out of people's pockets? When do you turn around and head back to business in Washington? I go back tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Well, and it's going to be gloomy and cold. <laughs> Enjoy your day today. Exactly. I, I'm recharging my solar batteries today. Congressman, right. as always, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in.